Welcome to Let's Go Racing. Danny Gibson here with Dick Girardi. We're in the Hall of Fame studio on today's show. The Breeders' Cup is on the horizon. We have some thrilling Breeders' Cup win and you're in races. Plus, one of our jockeys hits a huge career milestone. Lots of local racing here at Parks, but our big event is next Saturday, October 19th, Hall of Fame Day. We're going to induct three new worthy candidates, and we're going to honor the late Mike Belezzi with the MP Belezzi Appreciation Mile. Yeah, so a huge day, another Saturday. We don't have that many of them, so get on out here next Saturday. Yeah, it's going to be a great day. Well, let's talk about two-year-old Phillies. This was a Breeders' Cup win and you're in. We're up at Belmont at Aqueduct in the Frazette Stakes, grade one, uh, going the one-turn mile. And uh, our favorite is Snow White. I love that name. I indeed. Uh, it hasn't even broke her maiden yet. Finished second in a maiden race at Saratoga, Danny. But we were most interested in Social Fortress, who we talked about last week, uh, owned by Joe and Basie, uh, trained by Jamie Ness. And it really worked out almost perfect. The Queen's MG scratched at the gate. Uh, Senza Paroli, who was going to be a huge favorite, did not scratch earlier in the week. So it goes off at 4-1 to one Social Fortress uh, with Jamie Rodriguez. So the race shaped up. Here's the call to Frizette. So they're chasing Social Fortress, who's the lone leader. Pondering is well settled there for Pratt, right there in second. Out wider in the purple cap comes Scottish Lassie in third. Snow White is in behind horses, is towards the back end of the field with what in the literal. They're tightly bunched there at the back. Another cliche is in that mix with Icona Mama. They're chasing Social Fortress through a 22 and 4. Opening quarter mile in, Social Fortress is doing it nicely so far. Here comes Pondering, moving in closer, and Scottish Lassie has got a three-wide run. Snow White just had to briefly steady, is in behind horses in fifth. Iconomama is making a move, and here comes Iconomama after the leaders. Another cliche, trying to launch a rally from the back. They went 46-1 and one for a half-mile time. The trailer is now what in the literal Social Fortress still there. It's Social Fortress up. Approaching a quarter mile left to go in Social Fortress. Here's the oncoming strides of Scottish Lassie, and now Scottish Lassie is sent for home. Scottish Lassie is now opening up on the field, and look at Scottish Lassie open up. A final furlong left to go. Scottish Lassie is now widening this margin and opening up in the frisette. It is going to be all Scottish Lassie punches her ticket, and she's on to the Breeders' Cup. Well, Scottish Lassie was too good getting a nine length of victory, just kind of drawing off. Off. And you mentioned that was the trainer's first stakes race. It was the first ever graded stakes win for Georgia Bray. And if you remember, Danny, Jody's pride just missed winning the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies last year. Well, Scottish Lassie gets an all-expenses-paid trip. Got a 90 buyer. This is horse who was a maiden. Had a tough trip in her maiden. Got bet in that start at Saratoga. As far as uh, Jamie's horse, Social Fortress, she showed, saw her out there. She just couldn't keep up with the horses in a stretch. But uh, Jamie was out here, as he is every week. And I caught up with him on Monday. Saturday's Social Fortress in the Frisette ran really well. Couldn't hold on. What'd you think? Yeah, you know, she ran well. She was third. You know, got beat by... Uh, you know, two up-and-coming horses, I think. And I think she kind of solidified maybe what we kind of thought in the, in the long term, that she might be a little bit more of a sprinter. You know, like I told, like we said earlier, she got soft fractions at Mom with two turns, and the competition wasn't there. This time the competition was there, and uh, kind of showed her true colors. But, you know, a third and a grade one for a homebred, we, we can't beat that. Did you start thinking when they kept scratching horses the <laughs> favorite and then another horse came out, maybe this is actually going to happen? I mean, it was uh, kind of coming along like, <laughs> okay, the favorite come out, another horse came out, and the horse got scratched. And uh, so, you know, the, but uh, at the end of the day, we're the third best horse. So now, what are you thinking for the future? You're talking maybe sprint. What, what, you got any races in mind next year? What are we talking about? I think we're going to give her some time off. You know, she's two. She's run three times. Uh, Joe and Mr. NBC, the he doesn't push his two-year-olds too hard, so uh, we really haven't made a plan yet. Uh, but I think before the race, uh, unless she something, if she win or look good, we thought a letdown would, would be probably best for her. So either way, she wasn't going to run anymore this year. I don't think so. You know, he, he's in it for the long haul. You know, you know, we want to have a four-year-old or a five-year-old, maybe a stake horse down the road. So in order to do that, you got to pump the brakes on these young horses. All right, well, we'll see. Uh, I'm sure Jamie will get her well spotted uh, to get a successful. I'm sure she'll get a stakes win. And how about the hottest sire, Mackenzie, right now, sire of Scottish Lassie? 2018 Pennsylvania Derby winner, Mackenzie, for Bob Baffert. So, yeah, very hot sire. In fact, we're not finished talking about it. 
Yeah, and you think that maybe we see a Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile Phillies winner I, here? I was extremely impressed by the winner, I think, to, to me right now, because she won't get bet like the Baffert horses and the Cox horses. I think she might win, and you might get a decent price. Ooh, Scottish Lassie, a name to remember. We're going to take our first break, but we have so much, so stick around. We have lots of racing for you. Midnight in Alaska has a clear-cut lead. They head down the backstretch, less than a half mile left to go. The Excite Center at Parks Casino, the region's hottest live entertainment venue. Check out your favorite concerts, comedy, boxing, MMA, all at the number one casino in Pennsylvania. Don't miss the hilarious Steve Trevino on Saturday, November 23rd, plus funny lady Kathleen Madigan on Saturday, December 7th. Don't miss these two exciting headliners, only at the Excite Center inside Parks Casino. Parks Casino, this is how you win. This is how you win. Tickets on sale now. The question a lot of people are asking themselves these days is do I buy new or do I buy pre-owned? Here's what I'll tell you. New car inventories are still low and new car prices are still high. However, with the certified pre-owned Nissan at Chapman Nissan, we have a huge selection and you can save thousands over new. Plus a seven year, 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty, roadside assistance, one year prepaid maintenance, and so much more. And not for nothing. Can you really tell the difference? I can't. Welcome back, everybody, to Let's Go Racing. Let's get to some racing. We're going to take a look at Parks' eighth race from Tuesday's card. These are PA bred fillies and mares, allowance optional claiming, nice purse to 42000 And our favorite is uh, Post One Butch Reed, confirmed star. At two to five, uh, good paper, good speed figures, and a deadly combination of Butch Reed and Michael Sanchez. Yeah, Kate DeMassey has a nice homebred for owner breeder Story Atchison. Midnight Alaska coming off the bench. Yeah, and anytime Kate said you have to pay attention. Here's the girls in Tuesday's eighth race. Midnight in Alaska has a clear cut lead. They head down the backstretch, less than a half mile left to go. 22 flat, sharp opening quarter. And mid Midnight in Alaska, well within herself on the lead. Chasing into second, do we do it? Confirmed star has advanced. She's in third. Then it's AG and C to the outside. Bohemia Babe continues to lose ground. She talks too much, making up some ground at the back. She's getting her rally underway. But Midnight in Alaska has the lead. They go around the far turn, a quarter mile left to go. Midnight in Alaska, that lead is diminished. On the outside, confirmed star looms, continuing her advance with every stride. Those two now in tandem. They hit the top of the stretch together. Confirmed star with the momentum. All the while, she talks too much. She's coming up the rail, continuing that big rally. Confirmed star blows right on by. She talks too much, making up ground into second, but not catching. Confirmed star, who has the 16th left to go. Confirmed star absolutely shines today. Geared down at the wire. Michael Sanchez gets three on the day. Confirmed star getting the win. And the race really set up nicely for her being six and a half furlongs, a lot of speed for her to run into. Yeah, it's set, exactly. It's set up about as good as it can be. She won pretty convincingly like a two to five shot should. Yeah, really nice PA bread. Well, let's take back to Monday's ninth race. This was Parks Picks and one of us is a winner. And I don't think it was me, but we're going to take a look anyway. $15,000 claiming a mile and 70 yards. And uh, our post time favorite was your horse, Greener Pastures. Greener Pastures at two to one. That man, Jamie Ness, Michael Sanchez, another really good combination. Your leading trainer and your leading rider. Yeah, I took it's game time. The other Ness horses and our second choice was Hoku for Carlos Caban. Yeah, another solid horse. Good race here. Yeah, sure. and he gets Paco. Here's the call of Parks Picks. People Force, it's game time. Thirsty Pappy now a clear third. Then on the outside, Spitzer Red, he's in fourth. Greener Pastures, fifth. Then it's Hoku, Roan Burgundy had to check up on heels. He's not having the best trip today. 23 and 2 for the opening quarter. They begin down the backstretch. The battle on the front end continues. People Force, resilient on the lead. It's game time. Continues to press press in second moving up the rail there's greener pastures thirsty pappy still in third spites to red on the outside hoku nowhere for him to go he's just about four lengths off the leading people force and roan burgundy he's in the clear at the back people force continues to lead a pressured 47 and three the veteran it's game time holds in second thirsty pappy spites to red greener pastures he's looking for some room in on the rail then back to hoku and still roan burgundy at the back and people force and it's game time not much separates these two as they go through the far turn on the inside people Force. It's game time. Running a big race to his outside. Greener Pastures now has some room. He's going to go to the outside as he tries to reel in the top two. They hit the top of the stretch on the inside. People Force. It's game time. Greener Pastures looms on the outside. Hoku's in fourth and beginning to gain. And Greener Pastures, he bursts clear. Greener Pastures now has the lead. People Force hanging tough, but 
Greener Pastures opening up comfortably now. There's a 16th left to go. Greener Pastures and Michael Sanchez waited patiently for room, and now they're geared down at the wire. Big win by Greener Pastures. And DJ was a big winner here picking Greener Pastures. And uh, I talked to jockey Michael Sanchez after the race. He is a jockey that really is coming into his own. Obviously, he's our leader for a reason. We'll talk about him later. He's really honing his craft. He said there's so many little things you can do in a race that makes a difference. And he said he did it here the first quarter mile in. And, uh, gets the win. Yeah, now, Jamie, er, Jamie, what a combination that is. Ness and Sanchez, look out. Yeah, and shout out to Craig Donnelly, also at Greener Pastures. Well, let's turn our attention to this week's National Races of the Week. It was some really good racing, too, up at Belmont at Aqueduct. The grade one champagne stakes for the boys going that one-term mile. And Mackenzie is another sire of our favorite here, Chancer McPatrick. Yeah, won the hopeful, look good doing it. Now, the question is, is this a closing sprinter, or is this just a really, really good, talented horse for Chad Brown? Oh, we'll see in a second. Tip Top Thomas, love the name here. Irad Ortiz teaming up with Todd Pletcher. Yeah, Todd Pletcher's won this time six times. Can he do it again? Who wins the champagne? You're about to find out. JJ, Zozo's in front is up by a full length. Then comes Tip Top Thomas watching the action here from second. In behind them is Colonel Bob, who's a shared third as Moplex is backing off the pace now up on the far outside executive order. They are lined up there in that mid-pack grouping as at the rail their lethal speed. The two at the back after breaking on top, Smokin' Wicked and Chancer McPatrick had to catch up to the field is the trailer, but it's about six lengths back from a 22.47 opening quarter mile. JJ Zozo has a half mile left to go and is now chased along by Tip Top Thomas, who's well within range. And here comes the move from Tip Top Thomas. Three wide executive order is moving forward as well. At the rail, there's Vacoma Rise, trying to keep up from fourth and Moplex. Chancer McPatrick has started this rally from the back end, was the trailer, but Chancer McPatrick is passing rivals quickly, and here comes Chancer McPatrick up on the outside. They're approaching a quarter mile left to go. The posted half mile time, 45.59, three quarters in one minute, 11 and one, and the leader is Tip Top Thomas, but has to deal with Chancer McPatrick, who's rolling down the center of the racetrack. Tip Top Thomas to the inside. Chancer McPatrick with every shot to run this rival down, and now Chancer McPatrick is in front. A 16th left to go, was last, now first, and Chancer McPatrick wins the championship campaign impressively and punches his ticket to the Breeders' Cup. Chancellor McPatrick really proved himself when Flavian asked him to go. Goodbye, off they went. Yeah, it could not have been much more impressive. 92 buyer looks to me like the favorite in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, but obviously it will be a difficult race. But Chad Brown's, uh, the only time he actually won this was with a maiden, Good Magic. He's had some champagne winners that weren't able to win, but this is a really neat horse. And as we said, McKenzie had himself a day. It's another son of McKenzie, the 2018 PA Derby winner. Wow, really cool to see him getting his due. We'll look out for him in the Breeders' Cup. Well, let's go out to Keeneland. We always love Keeneland. This is a Claiborne Breeders' Fraternity. Two-year-olds going two turns a mile and 16th. Nice per $600,000. And, of course, it's a grade one. And Ferocious is our post-time favorite. Yeah, he was second by a half to, uh, to, to you know, the horse we just talked about, Chancellor McPatrick and the hopeful, and had some issues in that race. In this race, he tossed the rider in the gate. It was a little concerning if you if you bet on the favorite here. Naughty boy, Louis. Lisa is ejected. Our second choice favorite, East Avenue, and Brendan Walsh talks about this might be the best horse he's ever trained. Yeah, he's similar to Maxfield, who was a hot two-year-old for him a couple of years ago, broke maiden at, at Ellis by a big number with a nice buyer figure. And if you're wondering where does this name come from, East Avenue is a major thoroughfare in Saratoga. Gotta love that. Well, here's the boys in the Breeders for Charity. East Avenue guides the field onto the far turn, leads it by a length and a half. Dapper Moon is second a half length. Ferocious now being ridden along from third toward the inside and still not closing the gap on the leader. There's a quarter mile to go. They're coming to the top of the short stretch. And East Avenue leads it by five lengths as they turn for home. Ferocious second a length. And Dapper Moon is third off the final turn. It is East Avenue working into the final furlong of the Claiborne Breeders Futurity. Maintains a five-length lead back to Ferocious in second. Dapper Moon is third. East Avenue will prove much the best in the Claiborne Breeders' Futurity. Well, East Avenue lives up to the height. Two starts, two wins, huge margins of victory. 
Clear cut winner and uh, Brendan Walsh, boy, he's got himself a nice colt. 95 buyer. This is a big time horse. I do think Chancellor McPatrick will go favored. I haven't particularly liked the West Coast two year olds. I think this horse is a second choice. Question about East Avenue. What happens if he doesn't get the lead? Because there is going to be other speed out there. But man, he looks like a really good colt by Medallia Toro. Yeah, would like to see if uh, Tyler Gaffleone stays aboard. And uh, it seems like he might. I would <laughs> if I had the call. Well, we're going to go to another race at Keeneland, the Indian Summer Stakes. $250,000 two year old sprinting on the turf, and we're all eyes are on Paco Lopez. Governor Sam, he's on the favorite. He's got 3,999 wins going into the race, and this horse has won a couple in a row, including stakes races for Paco. Nice horse for George Weaver, chasing Liberty, second choice, Rob Atris out in Kentucky. Yeah, you don't see Rob Atris down there that much, but every once in a while he leaves New York, and he's usually dangerous. Well, who doesn't love an Indian summer? We sure do, and here's the race. Floodlights draw alongside of Governor Sam, who still has the lead by a neck against the rail. A quarter mile to go. A gap of four more lengths then. Back to Bad Gal Party, who's toward the inside as they straighten away for home. Here comes Floodlights after Governor Sam out on bail. Goes to third, still six lengths away. Governor Sam fighting on. Floodlights is there. Out on bail to third. GW's girl chasing Liberty is fifth, who's still seven lengths back. Governor Sam in front. Out on bail to final try. Governor Sam wins the Indian Summer presented by Keeneland Select. And there it is, career win number 4,000 for jockey Paco Lopez. Wow. I mean, Paco, is he's got one work ethic. Let's certainly say that. Nobody like him. Uh, I wrote about it this week on letsgoracingparks.com. And Danny was cool that he got his 4,000th in a stakes race. And only Paco, right? He's here for three days last week. Takes a day off on Thursday, sort of. I mean, flew to Florida, Gulfstream for a day, Keeneland for two. He's right back here on Monday, and I caught up with him outside the paddock. Congratulations. 4,000 is a big number. What was that like at Keeneland when you got that number? That was always great, you know. Anybody winning in Keeneland is a great place to win races, you know. Any, everybody wanted to be in Keeneland, be trying, be horses, be trying. And that was great. I feel great making 4,000 over there. How did you get there this fast? I looked it up. You haven't been riding that long to get to 4,000, like 230, 240 wins a year. How'd you make it so fast? Well, when you ride in uh, a lot, you know, I ride here in Jersey, Florida. When you work hard, you make it. And you do work hard. I mean, even last week, three days at Parks, one at Gulfstream, two at Keeneland. What is it about you and travel? Do you just like traveling? Yeah, I like to work, you know. Yeah, I tried very hard the last month to make 4,000, and I was first thing in Momo, second Meadowland, and far Delaware, and Ghosting. I have a sign everywhere, and finally I did it just in Keelan. Paco, always fun to talk to, and I loved your story this week because there really isn't anyone else like him, and you just got to give him so much respect. He's such a hard worker, and horses really run for him. They love his style. And he's only been riding for 17 years, Danny. That's an average of 235 wins a year. I mean, my man does it. He's second in the country this year and wins to I read. This horse is part owned by Alex Bregman, a third baseman for the Astros, who's really into the sport. And I'm assuming he'll go next in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. And hopefully Paco will stay aboard. I'm sure he will get a chance at a second Breeders' Cup win. He won the Breeders' Cup Sprint on Roy H. Oh, well, I'll be rooting for him out in Del Mar. We're going to go to another break, but you don't want to touch that dial because we have so much coming up. Jockey training of the week, best of the rest, all on the other side. This is Parks. This is how you roll. This is how it goes. This is how you pop. This is how you rock. Take a chance, do a dance, little romance. This is how you. This is how you excite. This is how you all night. 360 hit me. Now we're going all in. I can feel it calling. The crowd, the light, the night, the sights, the vibe is right. This is how you. This is Parks, Pennsylvania's number one casino experience. This is how you win. Racehorses are pampered, treated with care and loved. Nothing is more important than their health and their safety. We do right by them. And they do right by us. The hardworking folks who proudly earn our living. In Pennsylvania's horse racing. And breeding industries. Horse racing is a lot of fun. But it's so much more. It provides tens of thousands of jobs. 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 And billions in economic impact each year. All across the Commonwealth. Horse racing in Pennsylvania. It's a winner. Welcome back, everybody. Let's turn our attention to this week's Jockey of the Week. 
Congratulations to this week's Jockey of the Week, Paco Lopez, who hit an impressive career milestone of 4,000 wins, all while winning a stakes race in Keeneland. Paco rode in Philly, Florida, and Kentucky all in a week. Our Jockey of the Week is brought to you by Novacare, the power of physical therapy. And it was quite the week for Paco, but we have to give a shout out to our leading rider, Jockey Michael Sanchez. He had nine wins here, and he is just pulling away in the standings. Yeah, he's right up there in the top five nationally too. He set a goal for himself this year and he's running right toward it. And he got over 200 wins this year. Pretty incredible. Well, let's get to see who this week's trainer of the week. Here it is. The PTHA proudly partners with the Tunnel to Towers Foundation to present this week's trainer of the week, Jose Santiello Calderon. He had a successful week with his small stable with two wins. Congratulations to our trainer of the week. Well, let's get to our Turning for Home family photo of the week. And this week, it's Graysley's, a four-time winner, bred in Ontario, with a Smarty Jones uh, family lineage in the dam side. Gotta love that. Was retired to, through another spin, one of our partner farms in South Jersey. Now hitting the show ring and jumping all the jumps with his new mama, Bonnie. Look at them go. Love those second careers for the Turning for Home horse. We certainly do. Go Graysley. Well, let's get to best of the rest. We're going out to California, Santa Anita, that is. This is the grade one American Pharaoh Stakes, a mile and a 16th here. And Martin Garcia is back with Bob. He made a call early in the week to Bob to see how he was doing. He said, hey, why don't you come out and ride this horse? Citizen Bull, who's out there loose in the lead. It's all Baffert all the time. Getaway car, also Baffert, the six to five favorite, makes a run at Citizen Bull. How many times do you think Baffert has won this race, Danny? Uh, whatever the name is. Oh, I'm gonna guess nine. 13. <laughs> I was and wrong. six of the last seven, <laughs> and I'll be there to bet against Citizen Bull in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Keep this in mind. Last year, the uh, Breeders' Cup was at Santa Anita. Not a single California horse won a single race out there. Well, you heard Keep that DJ, in mind this year. Yeah, you heard DJ say earlier, the California horses are no good. Keep an eye on Kentucky and New York. They're not all no good, but I don't, I don't like the two-year-olds. In the two-year-olds, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go to Belmont at the Big A, grade three. Belmont Turf Sprint, $200,000, six furlongs on the turf, and uh, nothing better is on the lead. Yeah, and we're interested in Alagon, the eight, who won the park stash here for Ned Allard, has every chance at 11 to one, just can't get there, and here comes Senbai for Christophe Clement. It was actually entered in the Turf Monster scratch, but Senbai gets up to win it. Yeah, nothing better really held on for a second Dude. there for Jorge Duarte. We're going back out to Keeneland for the Phillies and Mares and the grade one Spinster Stakes, sponsored by Judd Mon, a mile and an eighth. And how cool is Idiomatic? As cool as it gets. And when they leave her loose in the lead, Danny, she's just almost impossible to beat. And everybody's waiting for the showdown on Saturday of Breeders' Cup week, right? I mean, we just can't wait to see Idiomatic against Torpedo Anna in what could be the race of the day. But keep this name in mind. Japanese Philly, awesome result, seven for seven. Those Japanese are pretty dangerous these days when they come over here, look out, I'm just saying. We've seen what they do in previous Breeders' Cups. Well, let's get to this week's PTHA Trophy Race. It was Tuesday's fifth race and we see War Master here getting the win. Jockey Michael Sanchez riding for Jamie Ness, owners Jagger and Sue Bear Stable. And I caught up with uh, Jockey Michael Sanchez. War Master gave you a good trip. Now you ride at all different racetracks. So you really know the different spots and the different tracks when to go, right? Yeah, you know, you put attention with the races, you know, how they're planning when you resources in the morning. So you get a, you know, a really good idea. And then study your horses, you know, see what, what they run the best and hopefully it goes well for you. I love talking to you in the afternoon and you're just a jockey that's really honing his craft. How good do you feel coming into this year? You're our leading jockey, you're having a phenomenal year. <laughs> awesome, awesome, you know. We put up a lot of work and you know, everything's going so well. And we just gotta keep going, you know. We're preparing for next year already, so hopefully next year we get a bigger year. Well, lots of great races there. We are gonna go to our final break. When we come back, we're gonna try to make you some money. Parks, picks, and Ion Racing coming up next. The Excite Center at Parks Casino, the region's hottest live entertainment venue. Check out your favorite concerts, comedy, boxing, MMA, all at the number one casino in Pennsylvania. Don't miss the hilarious Steve Trevino on Saturday, November 23rd, plus funny lady Kathleen Madigan on Saturday, December 7th. Don't miss these two exciting headliners, only at the Excite Center inside Parks Casino. Parks Casino, this is how you win. This is how you win. Tickets on sale now. 
Though Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for parks racing's horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings. PA Bread, I think we've built a brand at this point. It's excitement at every step. Roses for Deborah just set a new track record. On average, for the past decade, Pennsylvania paid over $28 million a year in breeders' awards, restricted races, and owner bonuses. Plus, PA Bread shine on the world's biggest stage. Just three states have bred more Breeders' Cup winners. Learn more at pabread.com. Welcome back, everybody. Well, here is Parks Picks. We're going to take a look ahead to Monday's eighth race. Uh, optional claiming 16000 Nice purse here, $50,000. So these horses will be running six and a half furlongs. Look, I need a winner. Yes, you do. I think we kind of like the same horse, we but I, I called this one first. I'm going to go with Caddy's uncle. He has been nearly perfect since uh, being claimed and in the barn of Cheeto. Really nice horse for beers. I know they're thrilled to have him. And I like him at this distance, and I like that he's had a little freshening, too, at time in between races. As you said, Danny, three in a row, second right off the claim, so on a roll. I'm going to go with Capo. Nothing but good lines. Been in some PA bread stakes lately and now dropping into this race. Well, Craig's always good for picking winners. Let's see who he likes next week. My selection for Monday at Parks will be in the eighth race, number seven, Talking Pharaoh. In his last start, he got in one of the craziest speed duels you'd ever want to see. Two horses went out. He dueled with the other horse, got tired in the stretch after going 21 and change, 44 and change. The horse that he dueled with that day came back to win by double digits. He's got, he's, this horse talking Pharaoh is two for four at the distance. He's shown he can rate off the pace if necessary, and I look for a really big effort for him in his fourth race following a hiatus. It is time for Ion Racing. Huge day down at Laurel Park. It is Maryland Million Day. Always, always a fun day. Love that day, Dan. And Precious Avery for Tim Shaw is in the ladies. Had a really good run. Witty, our good friend in the turf sprint, the PA bred. A lot of parks horses in the distaff, Danny. Your good buddy Aaron has Bourbon Bond Bay. Hasn't run in a year. Jamie Ness has a couple. Foxy Jr. who won the Plum Pretty here. I talked to the judge from Mariah Montoya. And in the classic, remember Market Maven who won the yes. race last year and got DQ'd uh, with Jamie Ness train? Well, he's back to try again this time for Cento Solis. Oh, we're going to be rooting for those Parks horses. And if you can't get down to Laurel Park, come to Parks. We are racing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Post time is still 1240. It will change soon. Hope you can come. And come next Saturday for our big Hall of Fame day. Thanks for watching. Let's go racing. We'll see you next week. And they're off. Skippy Longstocking has early speed. We the people from in between horses. Taba has got the lead now. It's Taba in the center of the racetrack, but Taba is drawing away. And Taba with Mike Smith, they win the Bet Parks Pennsylvania Derby.